This webinar is the Five Pilgrim Keys, Key 5, Liberty. And let's take a look at the National Monument to the Forefathers and the keys we've covered so far. Key number one, faith. Key number two, morality. Laws behind the statue. Education is to the left. And then finally, the last key is liberty. We'll take a look at four components represented by liberty, the statue. Firstly, liberty's head. There's a steady gaze, clear sight, a confident countenance, and a rising sun on his helmet, a new day of liberty dawning. Secondly, the slain lion, which can be seen by the paw on his right shoulder, the left arm where there's lion skin and the lion foot, and then behind his back is the lion's head. And the lion represents spiritual tyranny, which they believe they were overcoming. Be self-controlled, the Bible says, and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, and the God of all grace will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. And so they believe they were overcoming a spiritual tyranny, but also they were overcoming civil tyranny. Sometimes by bloody death and cruel torments, other wiles, imprisonments, banishments, and other hard usages, and the ports were locked against them. Thirdly, the shackles of tyranny are broken, represented by the chains in his hand. The chains dangle down onto his left thigh, or calf. And then lastly, the chains under his foot, uh, showing that tyranny is in submission to free men. And then the fourth aspect is his sword, which you will note is sheathed. The sheathed sword represents pilgrims would defend their liberty, but would not take an offensive position. The best way to keep the peace is to be prepared to defend oneself, community, and nation. The statuettes help us further interpret these ideas. One statuette is tyranny, the other is peace. Overcoming tyranny. The hand is raised up in God's strength. The foot is on the tyrant. He's kept under control. Freedom's worth fighting for, and tyrants are always trying to get back up. The quest to gain power seems innate in man. You can see this tyrant on his elbow trying to raise himself. On the other side of the equation is peace. There's an olive branch that's offered. The olive branch of peace is offered first. In the cornucopia, peace brings abundance. Well, the pilgrims at one point received from the great Narragansett tribe in a braving manner. They sent a messenger to them with a bundle of arrows tied about with a great snake skin, which their interpreters told them was a threatening challenge. Upon which the governor, with the advice of others, sent them a round answer, which meant send an answer back, that if they would rather have war than peace, they might begin when they would. But the pilgrims had done them no wrong. Neither did they fear them, nor would they find them unprepared. They sent the snakeskin back by another messenger with bullets in it. They also took the prudent step of building more secure protections for themselves, including a better maintained fort and flanking works. So strive for peace, but be prepared to defend themselves. The U.S. SEAL carries forward this story in the Claws of the Eagle. Why does our national seal have a clasp of arrows in its claw? Well, it relates back to this story. And it relates back to the United States position over the years of pro promoting peace, but being ready for war. 150 years later, in 1776, liberty was still being strived for in the Declaration of Independence and in the Founding Fathers' minds. And they defined five aspects of, of liberty. General liberty, not oppressed in body, will, or mind. Natural liberty, acting as one thinks fit without any restraint, self-restraint by God's moral code. Civil liberty, the protection of a person's natural liberty in the state of society where evil is restrained and good is allowed to flourish. Lastly, religious liberty, adopting and enjoying opinions on religious subjects and of worshiping the supreme being according to the dictates of conscience without external control. And political liberty adopting and enjoying opinions on political subjects and having the freedom to express those opinions in public. That includes the freedom of the press to publish such opinions and also the freedom of a nation from other nations. As we wrap up this person of liberty, let's take a look at the spiritual nature of liberty. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 
Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you, will, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. And Hammett Billings, in his biblical worldview, as he formed the idea around this sculpture, I must have had this in mind, because it so resonates with this Statue of Liberty. Well, the pilgrims landed, and that's in the, the sculpture on the bottom of the uh, Statuette of Liberty. And again, we've seen this image before in this series of giving thanks to God for his providential care. Finally, to conclude with Daniel Webster on Liberty and God, who spoke at the Bicentennial, the 200th anniversary of the Pilgrim's Landing. God grants liberty only to those who love it and are always ready to guard and to defend it. Does that define you, and does that define our generation? My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.